Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Darren Gidman from GuitarControl.com bringing you this video lesson. Uh, today, I want to go over some uh, kind of just basic fundamental things as far as practicing goes if you're a beginner. Um, a question that I get asked a lot from students, and I remember having the same question when I was in guitar lessons and I never really got a good answer on it as a general rule. Um, you know, I'd ask, okay, you know, what, what should I practice? And they'd say, oh, just practice what we're working on. And as you, as you start getting more things, you've got all this stuff. And if you have like a, a limited time, you know, like where you, you know, you can only, you know, commit like 30 minutes a day to practice, it, it just becomes impossible where you're going to be able to play everything, you know, that you have in, in 30 minutes. And 30 minutes a day is ample time to really make decent progress, you know, on guitar. So, uh, with my students, I actually create practice schedules for them, and so that's what I'm going to kind of do is go over this with you um, to to kind of help you put together your own, your own practice schedule. Now, uh, this is really aimed at beginners, and so if if you're a beginner and you start out this way, as you progress and you get more things, you know, you, you learn more advanced things, some of the first things that you... Uh, practice you aren't going to need to practice all the time anymore so what you really want to do is make a 30 minute schedule and break it down into uh you know five ten minute blocks or whatever you know we'll kind of go over that uh, for every day of the week so that way everything is always getting covered you're not beating anything to death and you you won't get rusty on uh on certain things and as you progress and you know, do more and more and more, you can just make adjustments to this. And then you get to a point, you know, well, you know, you could get to a point um, if you really, you know, decide you really want to take guitar far and you want to do a lot of different stuff where you may find that 30 minutes is no longer long enough to accomplish everything that you need to do. And then you might need to, you know, raise it up to an hour and then adjust your schedule accordingly. All right. So uh, the first thing that you want to do when you practice, and so this is like your first five minutes of your practice uh, block, is warm up. Now, uh, I think a good way to warm up in lieu of doing like exercises and things like that is just to play, you know, play something that you can, that you can do. You know, maybe, you know, if you have a song that you know how to play, you know, an easy, you know, song, play that. Play that song. If you haven't learned any songs yet, um, just do anything that you already can do. You know, I mean, if you... Uh, if you know three chords, play those three chords that you can, that you can play, you know, and, and work on, you know, switching between the chords because you want to, you know, you want to get warmed up. Okay. And then the next thing uh, you want to do is, uh, is take five minutes and work on uh, your, on your chords and not just, you know, not just, you know, strumming the chord but to really be effective with with playing is that to being able to switch between chords quickly so one of the the things that happens is that when you start out you know you learn a chord like you learn C and you're looking at your chord chart and you're like oh, okay see my first finger is here and my second finger is here and my third finger is here and then uh, what happens is that every time you go to play that chord you get the into this habit of always doing that putting one, on one finger at a time and ideally what you want is that you put all your fingers down at the same time. Now, uh, eventually that just happens, you know, but it can take a long, long time. So some uh, things that I recommend that like kind of speed this process up is with a, uh, with C, for example, just put all your fingers down for the, you know, the chord, give it a strum. <laughs> Your ear will tell you if you're doing it right. You don't want to rely on by looking. But for right now, you are going to look at your hand. And then try lifting all three of these fingers up at the same time, about maybe a half of an inch off the fretboard, and then set all three of them back down at the same time, and then give it a strum. Um, when you first start out, one of the things that will happen is that when you lift your fingers up, they're just going to uh, go crazy and try to go back to being side by side because that's what they're used to doing. That's the, you know, like the muscle memory that you have right now. But by lifting and setting and then 
listening. Well, that doesn't sound right. I'll look down, oh, my first finger moved up, it's on the wrong string. So that's why you want to, you want to go off of your ear. So strum, raise, set, strum. Now, if you do this for a couple of minutes, which is going to seem like eternity because it's not very fun, if you do that a couple of minutes a day, you know, in a week or two, you're going to be like way better. As you get better at doing that, try going higher. And it defeats the purpose, by the way, to try to slam your fingers down like you're trying to swat a fly. Don't do that. Just slowly. We're working. What we're trying to do is develop that muscle memory. So give it the strum, and then you get to where you know you raise higher. Set, strum. Until you can just reach up without looking and you have it correctly. Now, if you do this with the C chord, I found that it kind of just, the other chord just kind of fixed themselves. I've been doing this uh, with students for years and it, it, it's really good, it really helps. Okay, and then uh, switching from one chord to another. So another uh, little exercise you can do is you take a G and you do a downstroke of G and then you're gonna reach for a D chord but just keep your third finger down if you're playing G like that. If you're playing, you know, this kind of G with the second string open, then you're just gonna take all your fingers off. But you do a, a down stroke, and then as you're reaching, just do an upstroke of like the first two or three strings open, or in this case where I've got my third finger down. And grab D, down, up with the open and back to G. So you just got it. Again, not very exciting, but it really does help. Now you're gonna to want to do the the one with C. You're gonna to wanna to be pretty good at that before you do this one. So maybe work on the C one for like your first week and then the second week you can take the C one out and replace it with this G to D one. All right, and then in, in this case, or now, now that you've done that, so now you can do stuff where you're, when you're practicing chords where you can um, practice switching between the chords. So you maybe you go like G, C, D, E minor, A minor, the C, whatever, you know, whatever you want. Um, if you are just uh, learning chords and if that's one of the things that you really need to, you know, focus on, and which by the way, now we're like 10 minutes into uh, our 30 minutes of practice. So now if, if you're working on, um, on learning chords, uh, it is much easier to just learn the chords one at a time than try to look at them all at once. You know, if you get like a chord book or a chart or something like that, then it's, you know, I remember doing this. Like you look at it like, oh, okay, well here's C and then here's A and then here's D and just keep playing them all over and over and over and over. It is more effective if you just focus on one chord. So let's just say, you know, you learned C. You got all your fingers in the right place. You want to practice, you know, taking your fingers away, coming back to it until you can grab, you know, until you can play that chord, you know where your fingers go, what the name of the chord is, what strings you don't strum. And you can do this without looking at your page. Now choose a different chord. Now, preferably, you don't have all your chords just on one page. You know, hopefully they're on, you know, like where you have to turn a page or flip your page over or something. Or maybe just use a sheet of paper to cover up the chord that you've already played so that way you're going to rely on your memory to go back to it. Now choose a different chord. So let's just say that the next chord you learned was E minor. So you put your fingers down, oh, your second finger here, third finger here, you know, all six strings, E minor. And then immediately do the chord you already learned, which was, what was it? Oh, it was C. How, how did that go? Now try to do it from memory. If you can't, then look at the page and you'll, and you'll go, oh yeah, I remember now. C. And then do the new chord. What was that? E minor. And then back and forth between E minor and C. Now, uh, and then choose another one and do the same thing. You know, so now you've got three chords. So if you spend about 10 minutes doing that, 
uh, now you've got uh, 10 minutes where you've been working on chords and you've got the five minutes where you've been working on, you know, like being able to, you know, get your fingers in the right place and play the chords and move effectively in your warm up. So now we're 20 minutes in. All right. So uh, that leaves us 10 minutes uh, for something else. So now uh, we're going to look at something that we're going to spend five minutes on, and that is working on picking technique with my right hand for like, you know, alternate picking and stuff. So uh, this particular exercise that I'm going to show you, uh, you're going to start on the ninth fret of the second string with your first finger, and the notes are nine, and then 10 with your second finger, and then 12 with your fourth finger, and then nine on the first string with your first finger. So those are the only four notes. So how you play this is on the second string, we're 9, 10, 12, to the first string, 9, and then descend back down. So we ascend, descend, ascend, and then when we get back up to this 9, we go back to the 12, and then back to the 9 on the first string again, back to the 12, and then back to 10. And then you just repeat that over and over and over again. Now, for, so you wanna memorize that sequence with your left hand. And then for your right hand, or your picking hand, this is alternate picking. So the ninth fret on the second string is a down, 10 is an up, 12 is a down. And then when you go to the first string, that's an up. Now, uh, a huge mistake I made early on was I, th I thought logically, well, I'm going, you know, down, I'm going up to the first string, so I should do another downstroke. Um, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> you, you want to do that as an upstroke. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So never two downs in a row, never two ups in a row. Now, uh, what I've found is that if, you are, if you're good at alternate picking um, and, you, and what you're playing needs to be something else just for the, you know, rhythmically or whatever, your right hand will just do what is necessary. Um, but if you're not, if you can alternate pick and it's something that requires alternate picking, it, it becomes really, really, really hard. So um, I can't stress this enough how important this is. Even if it's a thing that you're not interested in playing fast or anything like that, it's still an important part of playing. If that is your goal, is you want to be able to play fast, you want to, you know, you like the Ingve, Paul Gilbert kind of thing, it's an absolute necessity that you can do this. So, um, re you know, really want to work on it. All right, so you spend five minutes on that, but that leaves five more minutes. We're, in, we're 25 minutes now, it leaves five more minutes. So for the last five minutes, just do whatever you want. If, if it's a song that you want to play that you enjoy playing, or you want to, you know, maybe you're like, yeah, I really need some more work on, uh, you know, switching chords. Or, well, I really like that alternate picking thing. I'm going to work on that. Whatever. Uh, you always want to make sure that you spend five minutes of just to do something that you enjoy doing. Because nobody, like, picks up the guitar because they're like, yeah, I want to learn how to play a bunch of exercises. Nobody's ever said that. They wanted to play music. So just do something that you enjoy, something that's musical, and have fun with it for the last five minutes. And then... Just, you know, when you start off, this might be just what you just do every single day. But when you get to where you're good at doing the chords, then you're going to probably start, you know, working on more songs and stuff. So take the chords and instead of doing, uh, you know, five minutes of chords every single day, you know, do five minutes on Monday and five minutes on Thursday. On Tuesday, don't do chords. On Wednesday, don't do chords. That way you... You won't forget them, you won't get rusty, but you're not gonna be like beating it dead to death by doing them every single day, which because it gets old after you have them down. There's no point in doing that. Uh, and then just substitute in something else. And then as you start learning songs and you you know you have a few songs under your belt, then you can break them up to where like you play, you know, whatever song on Monday, and then on Tuesday you play this other song, and so on and so forth. All right, so the bottom line is is if the if you have your practice very organized 
and prioritize. You know, you have this schedule so you know that what you should be doing on each day and you're not just winging it. Then you don't forget to do things. Everything gets covered, gets taken care of. All right. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, leave me a comment and be sure to subscribe to the channel and I will catch you next time.